In this video we are going to cover how to calculate the power for t-test type data in R. If you have not seen the previous video where we go through the math behind the power calculation, you should please do so before seeing this video. So if we want to compare two means from two different distributions, two different normal distribution, we first ask the question of these means being different and we do that by posing the null hypothesis of them being equal with the alternative of them being non, not equal. Then in order to make a power calculation you need to assume some difference between these two uh, mean values for the two different distributions. Further you also need to know something about the standard deviation in the population and then you estimate the distribution of the test statistics, and that was what we went through in the previous video. When you have done that, you can calculate the power for the study. So the cookbook for power calculation is, as you do not have any knowledge on your data, or you do not know the data yet because you haven't conducted the trial, you need to have some idea about the effect size, that is the difference between the two means in the populations. Further, you also need to have a knowledge about the uncertainty or some assumption about how much spread there is around the mean in each of the two arms. Then you choose a significance level and further how high of a high how, how high a power that is needed, how low should the type 2 error be, and then you calculate the required number of samples n in order to reach the power under this assumption. So let's go into R and see how this is done. There is a need function in R which is called power t-test and if you simply just run the question mark in front you'll get the documentation for it. And here you have all the ingredients, how many observations there are in each group, what is the difference between the means, what is the standard deviation, significance level and power and so forth. So let's just try to use this guy and let's, let me first define uh, my assumptions. So this is the mean in the first distribution. Let's put that as 5. Then the second distribution. I, so for this one being the control group, this is the case group. Let me assume that this one is 6. And I assume that the spread in the data is 1.2. So now I would like to calculate the power if I include 12 persons in each sample arm. That is 24 in total. So n equals to n. The delta here is equal to the difference between the two. And the SD is equal to the S. So if I run this code you will see that the achieved power from such a trial here is roughly a half. That means that if I conclude, if I run the trial, then half of the time I will be able to um, conclude that there is a difference, and half of the times I will be able to, I will not be able to conclude that there is a difference between the groups. So let me just show you that. This is indeed the case when we simulate data. So let's simulate some data. X1 is, is the first sample here. I need n of these guys with a mean of 1 of the first and a standard deviation. So X1, this is the one draw from the first population. I do the exact same to get the case arm, where I just change this, the mean. So this is x1, this is x2, and then I test these two against each other. And I just use the normal t-test with um, the alternative of not equal. And I'll see that I'll get a p-value which is larger than 0 0.05 here. So now I just call this my, my test 
and what I would like to, to collect is the p-value for this one. So now I've run it once. The p-value, then it was significant. I've run it one more time, significant. And one more time, significant. And so forth. So what, what I would like to do now is to make this into a loop. So I run this thousand times and collect the p-value for each of these ones in order to see how many times do I actually achieve significance. So here is the p-value distribution and what I'm interested in is how many times is this guy below the significant level, significance level. And here it says that 475 times of the trials conducted out of 1000, I achieved significant results. If we just check the power calculation up here, it says 0 0.49, so really, really close to this number, the proportion here. This one is out of 1000. So these two, this one divided by 1000 is pretty close to this one. So here I've shown you how you can actually verify that your power calculation is indeed returning the correct answer. A small thing here is that if you do not have any knowledge, or if you have only slightly knowledge on your system, you can modify this one in order to calculate the power for a range of different solutions. For instance, I would like to fix the number to be, for instance, um, 15, but I do not know the difference between these two. So what I do is I make a vector, diff, which is a sequence from zero, where there is no difference, up to two, and I would like this one to be 100 long. So here I have a range of differences which I would like to calculate the power for. So the first one is zero, no difference, up to two. So instead of chugging in delta as being the exact difference between five and six, I use this um, I calculate a number of differences and then I plot this difference versus each other. Let me just... And I do that by plotting the difference on the x-axis and then this power one and what I want to take out from it is the power. So I plot these two versus each other. I would like it to be a line. So I do like this. And what we see here is that the relation between the true difference, the alternative hypothesis, the difference between the two groups, when that increases, the power increases naturally. Add at any expected difference here, for instance 1, we could go in and say, well, in this case, the power would be 0 0.5. And if the difference is 1.5, we would achieve a power of just a little more than 0 0.8. And if it's 2, we are close to 1. So you could actually calculate the power for a range of solutions, which you can use to say, well, if this is the case, then we need a difference which is at least 1.5. And if we have even more, then we will have strong power.